thanks so much. So I'm Joe, I am Joe, and uh, I had the good fortune to be a classmate and teammate of Ken Rosberg, as did Ed Woolman and uh, Carrie is a classmate. I think there might be a couple of other people here this afternoon. Um, just recently, from 1975 to 1979. Um, and it's my honor this afternoon to tell you about my friend and past classmate and teammate, Ken. First, I want to welcome Ken's wife, Lana. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. And um, I also want to take just a quick moment. Uh, in our lives and everything that occurs, sometimes things aren't available as opportunities if somebody else didn't take an action at a different time. So they don't know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to take a moment here to recognize Clancy and Charlene Woolman, who are seated right back here, because they, along with, Clancy will have to tell me which priest it was, uh, they brought wrestling to Pius. And so Clancy and Charlene, will you stand up for a moment, please? Well, upon meeting Ken at the outset of our freshman year, it was immediately clear that Ken was a quality person and a gifted athlete. Ken demonstrated respect, and he earned respect during the school day on the football field and on the wrestling mat. Through his high school years, Ken continued to emerge as a quiet leader and emerging as an agripreneur. We all read about the new startups and things these days, Ken was so far ahead of what's going on today, it's, it's incredible. While we city kids were sleeping in every school morning and rushing in to get to school in the nick of time, so we wouldn't have to go see Mrs. Butler back then, uh, Ken had already been awake for two hours. Milking the herd of dairy cows, he was in the process of purchasing from an elderly nearby farmer. Ken was raised by loving parents that set high expectations for their children to do, always do their best. For Ken, striving to be a state champion wrestler and football player were only two of the goals he was pursuing during high school. As I believe many of you know, and Tim was speaking about a moment ago, <clears throat> wrestling places you on the mat on your own. Everything you do is seen by all. There's nobody else to count on while you're out there on that match nobody else to pick up the slack for you. You completely own the outcome of your match. Your coaches and teammates can shout encouragement and reminders to you, but your mind and body have to, do, have, to have the will to put those into action. Ken was well suited to wrestle as he was already becoming, a self becoming self sufficient in many other aspects of his life. When Ken wasn't on the wrestling mat, he was always encouraging his teammates to leave it all on the mat. On February 17, 1979, the day Ken, who had brought a 19 wins season record to the Nebraska State Wrestling Championship Tournament, won the 185 pound championship by decisioning Norris's Lee Schneider, their rivals way back then, uh, in a six to two match. He told Ken Hamilton of the Sunday Journal Star, I really feel upbeat. I've beaten Schneider before, but he was tougher than ever today. I was thinking I had gotten my lead too early. I knew I had to come up with, with ways to stay on top. I think I'm as relieved the weekend is over as I am that I won. I had an opportunity to speak to our esteemed wrestling coach at that time, Dick Caster, a pious graduate and prominent pious wrestler, and he went on to wrestle at Nebraska Wesleyan. He wanted to attend today, but he's in Texas for a family wedding. Coach Caster, Coach Caster at the time told Ken Hamilton, Ken is a very thoughtful, strategic wrestler. He knows when and how to do what it takes to win. He's quiet and cool before his matches. You just know he's thinking hard about the upcoming match. I talked to Coach Caster, and uh, he reiterated the comments that Ken Hamilton, that he had told to Ken Hamilton, and he added, um, that it was clear as Ken's freshman year, during Ken's freshman year, that he was blessed with exceptional athleticism that along with his strength allowed him to control the pace of his matches. By becoming our first state champion, 
Kim provided future Pius Wrestling coaches an example to encourage their wrestlers to strive for, and Ken opened the door for five additional championships. Paul Castle in 1998, Isaac Gingler in 2002, James Castle in 2004, Michael Seidel in 2006, and Jared Nickman in 2012. The other thing that, uh, about Ken in the other sport that he excelled in was football. Um, there was a time because of Ken's hard work in um, pursuing his dream to uh, farm and be a producer that it wasn't, we weren't certain, Ed and I especially, we weren't certain if we were going to see Ken our senior year. So uh, as I recall, uh, we made a few special trips out to go see Ken and make sure that um, we knew for certain he was going to be with us. Because the truth was, we weren't sure that we would have uh, the, the power on the line that we would need to uh, Win, win our games that year. And so he did join us, and we're forever grateful that he did. And um, he, he was always a humble player, always confident, and always uh, respected Coach Aldrich and the other coaches. Recently, Pius, on their website and other places, posted an article written by Monsignor Bapp, who is here this afternoon, about the selection of Thunderbolts as Pius's nickname in the fall of 1956. As I read it and understand it, it was inspired by a thunderstorm that Father Bapp, Father Keeley, and coaches Vince Aldrich and Bill Inbody had encountered on a football scouting trip to Columbus, Nebraska. The next day, Father Bapp consulted Webster's Collegiate Dictionary to check for a possible definition for the word thunderbolt. He immediately communicated to the others the definition he had found that he believed well described the nickname they were seeking. The rest is history. It's a person or thing likened to lightning in suddenness, effectiveness, and power. I believe this well describes my friend Ken Rosberg. Finally, Ken, on this very afternoon, I want to reveal to you an event that occurred when you were a sophomore that you don't know about. <laughs> because of your athletic prowess and versatility, our, va our varsity basketball coach at the time, Don Kelly, was adamant that he wanted you to become the center on his basketball team. He told, uh, excuse me, he, uh, um, Coach Casker fiercely protested. He told Coach Kelly that he knew for certain that your destiny was to be a state champion wrestler. It got so heated that Vince Aldrich and Georgia Boyle had to intervene. They convinced Don and Dick to agree to a coin flip. The rest is history. <laughs> Coach Castor won the flip. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> fake news. It's fake news. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce my friend, classmate, and teammate, Ken Rossberg. whether it's here or the grocery store. It seems like it's tend to start all over again, and that's a hoot. But then I get carried away, so I'll just move on to the close. And uh, uh, I want to thank, and I'm tickled to see Joe LaDuke and Ed Woolman here today, because uh, I, don't, I really don't think I would have done high school sports if it wasn't for them. They, they made me do it. So, and, uh, but, and that was just that. I just met him, too. I never knew him before high school. 
fast friends and good friends. And of course the coaches, the faculty and staff uh, by us. There's no way it could be pulled off without them. They're the ones who make it possible. The students. Again, as I run across them occasionally, uh, the students um, and get to relive things uh, all over again. It seems like little snippets, what I remember, which is less and less every year. But uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun, and I, I thank everyone for the memories. Thanks.